the DC-10 was never supposed to win. In the early 1970s, Boeing ruled the skies with the mighty 747. But McDonnell Douglas had other plans. Their new wide-body jet, the DC-10, was sleek, efficient, and built to dominate medium-haul routes that Boeing had overlooked. For a moment, it worked. Airlines rushed to order, passengers praised its comfort, and Boeing suddenly felt the heat. But history took a darker turn. Controversial design choices, tragic accidents, and corporate battles changed everything. This is the story of how the DC-10 almost outsmarted Boeing, and why its legacy remains both brilliant and haunting. In the late 1960s, the aviation world was buzzing with change. Boeing had just launched the 747, the world's first true jumbo jet, and airlines were clamoring to modernize their fleets for the new era of mass air travel. But the 747 was enormous, designed for long-haul international routes with hundreds of passengers. Not every airline wanted a behemoth like that. Many carriers were looking for something smaller, more versatile, but still capable of carrying more passengers than the aging narrow body jets of the time. This was the exact gap McDonnell Douglas aimed to fill with the DC-10. The DC-10 was pitched as the perfect middle ground. With three engines, two under the wings and one at the tail, it could fly long distances across oceans, but also operate economically on shorter domestic routes. Airlines were especially drawn to its wide body fuselage, offering the same new standard of comfort passengers were starting to expect from the 747, without the enormous costs of operating a four-engine giant. For many carriers, it was the sweet spot, a big jet that wasn't too big. From the very beginning, the DC-10 seemed like a winner. McDonnell Douglas marketed it aggressively, emphasizing efficiency and flexibility. It was designed to compete head-to-head -head, not just with Boeing, but also with Lockheed's upcoming L-1011 TriStar, another wide-body trijet. The race to capture the mid-size market was fierce, and for a time, the DC-10 surged ahead. Orders poured in. American Airlines became the launch customer, and soon, other major carriers like United, Continental, and Northwest followed. The DC-10 quickly built momentum internationally as well, securing deals with airlines in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. McDonnell Douglas had struck a nerve with the industry. For Boeing, this was unsettling. The 747 had been a gamble, and while it was proving successful, it was clear that not every airline could fill such a massive aircraft. The DC-10 carved out a new market segment almost overnight, forcing Boeing to rethink its strategy. For the first time in decades, the Seattle giant faced the possibility that it might lose dominance in passenger aviation. At the dawn of the 1970s, the DC-10 looked like a genuine threat, a jetliner that could redefine competition. But as history would soon show, early triumphs don't always guarantee lasting success. As the 1970s began, the DC-10 wasn't alone in chasing the middle market. Lockheed had introduced its own wide-body trijet, the L-1011 TriStar. On paper, the TriStar was an impressive machine. It featured advanced Rolls-Royce RB-211 engines, cutting-edge avionics, and a reputation for safety and engineering excellence. In many ways, it was the more sophisticated aircraft compared to the DC-10, but Lockheed stumbled. Development delays, ballooning costs, and a financial crisis at Rolls-Royce nearly doomed the L-1011 program before it even had a chance to succeed. McDonnell Douglas capitalized on this chaos. The DC-10 was simpler, cheaper, and crucially, available sooner. Airlines that couldn't wait for the TriStar signed up for the DC-10, even if it lacked some of the technological polish of its rival. Timing, more than technology, gave McDonnell Douglas the edge. For Boeing, the growing popularity of the DC-10 was alarming. The Seattle manufacturer had invested heavily in the 747, betting that global air travel would explode. While that prediction was correct, the 747 was too large and costly for many routes. The DC-10 offered airlines flexibility at a fraction of the operating expense. Suddenly, Boeing found itself squeezed between two competitors, the TriStar with its reputation for technical excellence 
and the DC-10 with its fast entry and aggressive pricing. Still, cracks were already forming beneath the DC-10's glossy surface. To bring the aircraft to market quickly and keep costs down, McDonnell Douglas had made compromises. Some design choices, like the cargo door mechanism, would later prove catastrophic. Maintenance crews flagged concerns, but in the race to deliver planes and secure orders, these warnings were brushed aside. Despite these hidden issues, the DC-10 was winning the sales war. By mid-decade, McDonnell Douglas had more than 400 orders, far outpacing Lockheed's troubled TriStar. The jet was becoming a familiar sight at airports worldwide, and passengers welcomed its wide cabins and quieter ride compared to earlier jets. From the outside, it looked like McDonnell Douglas had not only outsmarted Boeing, but also managed to sideline Lockheed in the process. Yet aviation history is never that simple. In a business where safety is everything, the smallest flaw can undo years of progress. And soon, a series of shocking events would drag the DC-10's reputation into crisis. By the mid-1970s, the DC-10 had become a symbol of McDonnell Douglas's comeback. Airlines were flying it across the Atlantic, passengers enjoyed its spacious layout, and competitors were scrambling to catch up. But behind the success story lurked a dangerous truth. The aircraft carried design flaws that would soon make headlines in the worst possible way. The first major warning came in 1972 with American Airlines Flight 96. Shortly after takeoff from Detroit, the rear cargo door blew open, causing rapid decompression. The floor partially collapsed, severing control cables and leaving the crew fighting for their lives. Miraculously, the pilots managed to land the plane safely and everyone survived. Investigators identified the cause. The cargo door's locking mechanism was poorly designed and could fail under pressure. McDonnell Douglas promised fixes, but airlines quietly complained that the modifications were rushed and inadequate. Those concerns became tragically real in 1974 with Turkish Airlines Flight 981. Shortly after takeoff from Paris, the same cargo door design failed again. This time, the floor collapsed completely, control cables snapped, and the plane plummeted into a forest. All 346 people on board were killed. At the time, it was the deadliest crash in aviation history. The disaster shook public confidence. The DC-10, once hailed as a rival to Boeing's giants, was now under suspicion. Airlines faced uneasy passengers, regulators demanded answers, and McDonnell Douglas scrambled to reassure the industry. Engineers rushed to redesign the cargo door system, but the damage to the aircraft's reputation was already spreading. For Boeing, this was a turning point. The Seattle company had been worried about losing market share, but the DC-10's troubles gave it breathing room. Passengers trusted the 747 more, and airlines wary of safety scandals shifted their focus back toward Boeing's products. McDonnell Douglas, instead of celebrating its dominance, now faced an uphill battle to convince the world its aircraft were safe. The Turkish Airlines crash wasn't the only problem. Rumors spread about hydraulic system vulnerabilities, engine separations, and maintenance headaches. Each new story chipped away at the DC-10's image. For an aircraft that had entered the market with such promise, the fall was swift and brutal. The aviation world had learned a harsh truth, Speed to market and low cost could never come at the expense of safety. But the DC-10's troubles were only beginning. By the late 1970s, the DC-10 had become one of the most controversial aircraft in service. For every successful transatlantic flight, headlines about mechanical failures or near disasters raised public fears. And then came the tragedy that almost ended the DC-10 forever. On May 25th, 1979, American Airlines Flight 191 departed Chicago O'Hare on a routine flight to Los Angeles. Moments after takeoff, the left engine and its entire pylon assembly tore away from the wing. The separation damaged critical hydraulic lines and disabled key systems. Within seconds, the aircraft rolled to the left inverted and slammed into a field. All 271 people on board were killed, along with two on the ground. It remains the deadliest aviation accident in U.S. history. The disaster horrified the public. Television footage of the burning wreckage dominated the news and investigators quickly uncovered troubling maintenance practices. American Airlines had been using shortcuts to remove engines for servicing, methods not approved by McDonnell Douglas. Still, the structural vulnerability of the DC-10's pylon design came under heavy scrutiny. 
The Federal Aviation Administration took an extraordinary step. It grounded all DC-10s worldwide. For weeks, airlines were forced to park their fleets while regulators examined whether the aircraft was fundamentally unsafe. Passengers canceled flights, travel agents steered customers to Boeing aircraft, and the DC-10's reputation hit rock bottom. Although the grounding was eventually lifted after modifications and stricter inspection requirements, the damage was lasting. Airlines remained nervous about the plane's design. Passengers openly avoided booking DC-10 flights. In the court of public opinion, the jet had become a symbol of corporate negligence and questionable safety. Meanwhile, Boeing capitalized on the chaos. The company doubled down on promoting the reliability of its 747 and the upcoming twin-engine 767. Lockheed's L-1011 never fully recovered either, meaning that Boeing effectively regained dominance while its rivals struggled with scandal and debt. McDonnell Douglas continued to produce the DC-10, but it was clear the program had lost its shine. What had begun as a bold competitor to Boeing now carried a stigma airlines could never fully shake. And yet the story of the DC-10 didn't end there. Despite its troubled past, the jet would find new life in unexpected roles, proving that even a tarnished aircraft can leave behind a surprising legacy. Despite its troubled history, the DC-10 refused to disappear quietly. Airlines eventually regained enough trust to keep it flying through the 1980s and 1990s, and the aircraft found a second life as a reliable cargo hauler. FedEx, UPS, and other freight companies embraced the DC-10 for its large capacity and long range. The U.S. Air Force even adapted it into the KC-10 Extender, a versatile aerial refueling tanker still in service today. Over time, many of the design flaws were corrected and the aircraft's later years were far less controversial. Pilots often praised its handling, and mechanics learned its quirks inside and out. By the time the last passenger DC-10 retired in the 2000s 10s, the jet had flown millions of passengers safely across the globe. Yet its legacy remains complicated. The DC-10 is remembered both as a bold attempt to outsmart Boeing and as a cautionary tale about the dangers of rushing design and ignoring early warnings. In many ways, it shaped modern aviation safety standards, ensuring that mistakes of the past would not be repeated. If you enjoyed this journey into aviation history, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We've got more stories of triumphs, failures, and the aircraft that changed the skies.